Go. Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Rest of My Daisy, back with part two of our extended examination of the Mighty Mighty Daisy 140 Defender. We left you last uh, having disassembled the gun and uh, leaving some questions for ourselves about how to get it back together. We've had time to explore the avenues of approach and to find a system that will work for you. All right, first let's take a look at the trigger assembly and how it goes together. As you can see, it's a folded steel trigger and it's got some uh, unusual attributes. Let me work to this side. The first thing you'll notice about this trigger assembly is it's got a small projection right back here. That is critical to making the safety device that works on this gun, the bolt assembly over here. This is the safety. This is what enables that to work. All right, so to get the trigger back together, it's pretty simple. You just got to take a look and see that it will slip in like so. The two holes line up. Now let's get it back because it's got to be right in this position so that the sear can come up until it gets blocked and fits in that hole there. And now that's important because this spring needs pressure to work properly. And I've shifted it. So let's take it back out. <laughs> it could be. Could be worse. Could be raining. So anyway, it goes back together like this. We get our hole placed and we make sure that a bolt can go through the hole like so. All right, if that's set up, then we're in the right spot. All right, so that's how the trigger goes back together. Now, I'll scoot over here this way and we'll get it installed in the gun. Uh, when I first started messing with this gun, I was thinking the trigger, the sear spring, was enabled by this little device, the bolt carrier, uh, the safety bolt, we'll call it. Uh, but no, it's not. It's actually enabled by the front of the buttstock. And you can see in the buttstock, when it uh, is when it's installed, you see that little bright, little light faint line, little bright line there in the middle. God, these lights are awful on this phone. But yeah, I got it. Well, let's try it this way. I can see the line pretty well with my eyeballs. See that white line? Right about there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on there. That is where this spring will end up resting. So the buttstock provides tension to the sear spring, and that's what makes that work. So that is a clue as to how you put, should put it back together. Uh, in previous attempts we had installed, I was under the impression that this device provided spring tension. It does not. It does another job entirely. So to assemble our gun, if you've got it all the pieces like this is, first thing you're going to do is drop the trigger in and get it in position. Now to do that, you got to center that up and you're going to have to move the camera because I can't see my hole. I can't believe you can't see through a camera. I can't. Wow. Now we're going to drop the sprint, the, uh, our uh, bolt through there and secure it so that it doesn't shift around on us very much. Are you just trying to get this thing in my way on purpose? Yeah, well, you're doing this on the left-hand side, man. We've never filmed with you on the left-hand side. So it's Move back jarring. over. Very jarring for me, man. That's all I'm going to say about it. All right, so you'll notice the trigger is now you. mounted. You notice the spring is down. Mm -hmm. So our next step in getting everything stuck back together is we're going to mount the buttstock. God, this is so much better. Why were we doing it that way? I don't know. I don't know. You really suggested it. Okay, now you can see that when you push the buttstock in, the spring pushes it back out. So that tells you you're in the right spot. Drop your bolt through there. That's stabilized. Now, we're going to put in the bolt slash safety. Now, the bolt has only got one part. None of these bits of metal in the middle around in here, they're all bronze welded in place. They don't move. They don't do anything. But this slot cut in the base of the bolt allows that little lever on the spring to lift up and the gun to fire. So this spring that's mounted in the side of the bolt assembly is there to tension the bolt so it doesn't just flop around willy-nilly. I imagine it would work with the spring out, but it might not work so well. So we've got our butt stock involved. And then we take our safety bolt and we run it through. Now when we get to this point, you gotta compress the spring and kind of elbow it in there. It does want to go, but it will. And then you'll notice there's a slot here at the top. Uh, well, let's pull it back out real quick. And I didn't explain that very well. Anyway, the slot at the top is important because it allows this bolt to spin. As you can see, it's a very narrow slot cut at an angle. So when you, um, when, the, when the bolt, when the lever engages the plunger assembly and the plunger assembly pushes back against the very tip of this bolt, it will 
push the bolt up. Now when you cock the lever forward and put the plunger assembly in the firing position, you'll be able to freely push this forward and drop it down, which will open up the slot, allow the trigger to function, and the gun will fire. That is how that works. So let's get this back in position. There we go. And our last step in reassembly is dropping the top stock screw through the bolt and securing it to the gun. Nice. So we'll run that down. Then we'll install the lever and we'll demonstrate that it in fact works. So that's the, the key elements is the trigger sear spring rests on the face of the buttstock, not on the face of the bolt. Mm -hmm. And the bolt has to be free in order to move so that when you arm the gun, I do with that little screw, there it is. When you arm the gun, it activates the safety, which is really cool. Bang, 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 here we go. Now be advised, these uh, screws that I'm reinstalling stuff with are not the factory screws, but they are Phillips. And they're easier to work with when you're doing discussive or percussive maintenance like we're doing right now. All right, so now, let's watch. All right. The bolt's down. Oh, oh I gotta go back in the hole. The bolt's down. Down. You can pull the trigger. Wow. All right, we're gonna cock the gun. Hope. Oh. We're gonna cock the gun. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Oh, it is. You know it is, man. Oh, come on, Dad. Woo! You got this. Push it forward. Okay. And the gun oh, fires. Oh, God, that was loud. Okay. Well, there's no shot too bad. Yeah, I know. We're going to do that one more time. I'm prepared. That's the issue. Let me, let me, uh, let me do right, this a little bit. Again. Let me do it the way I normally do it. Yeah. All right. Now, you see how the bolt popped up? Yeah. It cheated back and it popped up. And if we pull the trigger, no fire. No fire. Can't work. All right. Got to run the bolt down and forward. Now the gun works. Yeah. So, that is the mystery of reinstalling the components and how they function inside the gun. To reinstall the forearm, slap it in so the hole's made up, slip your uh, barrel band down over, wiggle it in place, and you now have a complete and functioning Daisy Model 140 Defender. And that took a while to get this video done, took a while to get this video done. But we're finished with the project. <laughs> gonna let the owner know he's gonna, he's got another one coming to me, a Defender number 142. And we'll repeat the process on that one when it gets in. That's all we have for you today, kids. This is Shane Bruce with Resto Mod Daisy, signing off.